It's impossible. Hey, Alvin, yes? where are you going to be sitting when I do that working bumper? I thought we took that out. Did they? Yeah, we took it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, we took it Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. All right, cool. All right, uh, we're not getting out of feed. I got nothing on my cell. Can somebody cue Josh? Are we even on that line? I don't know where we are. I'll just look at you, Josh. I got no IFB. What's the problem? I can't hear anything, guys. We're starting KI News with some breaking news out of Northeast Austin's flame pouring through an apartment building right now. This two alarm fire started just over an hour ago at the Promontory Point Apartments. Now, this is still an active scene at 2250 Ridge Point Drive. I want you to take a look at some video just posted to our Facebook page from one of our viewers. Roy Grimm shot these intense flames tonight. KITV's Adam Rakuzin is joining us live on the scene with the very latest. What do we know so far, Adam? And Ron, Judy, the fire broke out about an hour ago. I was informed by the Austin Fire Department that one firefighter was injured. We saw him being wheeled out on a stretcher, but thankfully that's only an ankle injury. So far, there are no injuries reported to any of the residents. Let me step out of the way and you can get a look. This fire did break out at the Promontory Point Apartments. Residents tell me when they stepped back, the flames were so intense they could feel the heat. Now, multiple crews were called in. You can see all the fire trucks and hoses lining the ground. Those hoses wrap around towards the back of the building. Fire crews tell me that this fire started in Building 10. Right now, there is no cause about that. About 30 people or more live in that building. We saw them standing outside of the apartment building, holding their clothes. Some people wrapped in blankets. Now, most of the flames were stopped to the third story of the building and up in the attic, but the other stories, the second and first, suffered heavy smoke and water damage, so those residents were moved out. At the time that we spoke with fire crews, they were going apartment to apartment making sure that there were no injuries but the last check so far that is to be the case there also could be some damage to some of the other buildings nearby now the red cross has been called in to help with this we did see some crews down there trying to take care of the residents here but thankfully no injuries to any of the residents about 30 people affected we'll bring you the very latest information as we get it reporting live adam rakusin ki tv news no injuries that's good news thank you adam now to our other top story tonight people taking action after two new incidents of gun violence today texas police right now are looking for the two men who shot and killed 
the assistant district attorney up in Kaufman County this morning as he was walking to work. And in Atlanta, a shooting outside a middle school there. A 14-year-old boy shot in the neck by a classmate. The boy is going to be all right. Incidents like these are prompting runs on guns at retailers all across the country. Today, Walmart said its customers can only buy three boxes of ammo each per day. People are fighting back against the threat of gun violence. KITV's Christy Post is in San Marcos, where the police department's Citizen Academy just started tonight. Well, Ron and Judy, we're here at the San Marcos Police Department. The Citizens Training Course actually gets people inside one of these police units, and they get to drive it on the course behind me. They also get to learn how to use a gun. I talked to several people living in this community, and they want to know exactly how the police keep them safe. <laughs> John Toller graduated from the Citizens Academy in the fall. The anti-terrorism stuff that's people don't realize it's 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 here. He tells us his spouse runs the Holiday Inn Express where she deals with law enforcement on a regular basis, which got them interested. Through the Criminal Justice Center, they'll have their crime scene investigators come in. They'll hold rooms for them to come in and and do investigation. He says he enjoyed learning the inner workings of the department even getting tased. <laughs> this year, San Marcos PD is seeing record numbers with 38 students. Officer Paul Stevens says the recent gun violence and debate could be a reason for the spike. People are afraid and they're not quite sure uh, how their local law enforcement would respond to certain scenarios. That's why he says they are transparent in their 13 week free course. We talk about terrorism, we talk about active shooters, uh, we talk about mental health. This is what they get when they graduate. The Austin Police Department is doing the same and also seeing an increase. Every week we do what we call a year and uh, week in review and we talk about everything that happened in the police department for that week. Uh, I'd say the good, the bad and the ugly. You just come up. Toller says he's using his experience to help other students. We had some stressful moments, uh, but the insight that we gained from going through this program was you just can't you can't trade it in for anything. We did some checking and found out the Round Rock Police Department and the Hayes County Sheriff's Department Citizen Academies are also seeing record numbers. Now, if you'd like to join one, there is a background check required, but we have all the links to them at KITV.com. In San Marcos, Christy Post, KITV News. A pair of scissors. That's one tool the Department of Homeland Security says you could use to stop an active shooter. That advice is part of a short crisis training video the agency posted on its website not long after the Newtown shootings. It suggests running and hiding in the event of a mass shooting. But if you can't, it says you might try to overpower the shooter with whatever means necessary. The image it shows is a pair of scissors. Under attack. Only on KITV tonight, Bastrop's embattled animal control director is speaking about, uh, so, about some serious allegations that have been made against her. So in your opinion, are the volunteers lying? Yes. Several volunteers claim Diane Mulligan has mismanaged this shelter, putting the animals' lives at risk. Tonight, she wants to set the record straight. Speaking exclusively with KITV's Alex Boyer, he joins us now live from the Bastrop Animal Shelter with what she had to say. Alex? Well, this dispute between the director and the volunteers has been going on for some time now. And at the center of this controversy, these innocent animals, both sides seem to feel they know what's best for the animals. And now it's turning dirty. <laughs> Diane Mulligan feels trapped within her own facility. Pinned between the animals she was hired to protect and the volunteers who feel protective of them. They basically boycotted the shelter and they started a slander campaign. Mulligan, who has been on the job for less than four months, is at odds with a group of volunteers who claim she's mismanaging the shelter. I think communication's been a big problem. So much so that the vocal volunteers took their concerns to county commissioners who sided with Mulligan. We didn't feel like that, uh, that our new director had had sufficient opportunity to set her own plan uh, for this facility. Until that new plan is in place, commissioners voted unanimously to temporarily ban volunteers from the shelter. Susie Swingle claims the animals are suffering. There have been a few um, adoptable animals that have been euthanized when there's kennel space available. I did some digging and according to county records, less than 10% of the shelter's dogs and cats were put to sleep in January. 
Mulligan stands behind those stats. But we're an open in intake facility. We can't feed zero euthanasia. It's just not possible. Then there's the allegations that some of the animals are living in filth. Diane, are animals lying in their feces here with nobody taking care of them? No, that's not true. We were given unrestricted access to the kennels and found animals to be in good health and living in clean cages. Mulligan maintains she's willing to give all of the volunteers another chance once those new guidelines are in place. And volunteers tell me that they would like to see county commissioners hire a mediator in order to help resolve this dispute between the volunteers and the director. As at this point, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. In the meantime, the director tells me that she's working on that new volunteer contract and hopes to have it available and ready to go by mid-February. Reporting live from Bastrop, Alex Boyer, KITV News. Thank you, Alex. Only on KITV, police dash cam video shows a judge caught speeding and some are crying foul about his penalty. Tonight, we ask the question, was it a case of cronyism or just a big mistake? Police clocked the judge going nearly 30 miles over the speed limit here at Highway 183 and FM 2001. If this happened to you, your fine could be in the hundreds of dollars. His fine, just one dollar. KITV's Adam Mercusen again. He found several cases of public officials' tickets getting dismissed. If you choose to speed, uh, 130 feet or it's hopefully only your wallet that will bleed. I try and get the ones that are public safety posing a threat or posing a, a danger to other motorists. What if you could get out of your ticket with barely a slap on the wrist? Well, that may just depend on who you are. Does it take being a public official? Are you logged in? That was a, a deferred adjudication uh, given to uh, a, a local judge, and uh, um, that will not happen again. Hi, Judge Spriggs. Caldwell County Justice of the Peace Johnny Spriggs, who handles traffic cases, was caught speeding. A professional at doling out justice, the judge was clocked doing 83 in a 55 mile per hour construction zone. Don't believe it? Here's the dash cam video from the Caldwell County Constable's office showing the judge's jag racing away. Notice the orange construction cones on the side of the road. It took the constable two minutes to catch up and pull him over. The published ticket price, $300, but his fine, just $1 and court costs. The judge used his legal right to ask for deferred adjudication. However, the local district attorney gave him an even better deal. One day probation and back on the road. Have you seen a one day deferral before? I have never seen a one day deferral. 83 at that point. We showed the dash cam video and a copy of the ticket to traffic attorney Joanne Torres. Do you think a $1 fee and a $1 defer is a pretty good deal? I think it's a great deal. Judge Spriggs denied an on camera interview but sat down to talk with me about the ticket. He was clear he would never abuse his power. By law, he could have argued the ticket but claims he wanted to take full responsibility. The judge said it was the Caldwell County District Attorney's Office who dismissed the ticket, not him. On, the DA tells me a typical deferral probation lasts 90 days, not one. It normally doesn't happen. I could tell you based on that, even under the transportation code, this person would not be eligible for deferred because you, ha you can't be going more than 20 miles over the speed limit. This was 83 in a 55. 28 miles per hour over the speed limit. Both the DA and judge say sometimes they cut people breaks. But attorneys argue their clients have never seen those perks. I sat down with the DA two times. At first, he just wanted to talk. But after showing him the evidence, he assured me this type of deal will never happen again. That one with the judge uh, uh, will not happen again. But that, that was a mistake on my office's part. That was KI's Adam Rakuzin reporting. There have been instances of a $1 fine, but attorneys say that's not a common practice. Both the judge and the DA say in Caldwell County, they don't have the resources to try every traffic case. So deferrals are used to plea many cases down. However, as you heard, there will be no deals moving forward like the one the judge received. A fighting back alert tonight about something you do to prevent a crime that 
could actually be inviting burglars right into your home. In Los Angeles, a burglary ring targeted newspaper subscribers who told the newspaper stop their deliveries while they were on vacation. Well, detectives think a machine repairman for the company that distributes the papers stole the Los Angeles Times vacation hold list and sold it to three suspected burglars. A similar case happened in Florida in the 1980s. We checked with Austin police and there are no similar cases here. We continue to follow our breaking news story tonight. That's a two alarm fire, apartment fire in Northeast Austin where dozens of people had to be evacuated from the Promontory Point Apartments. That's near Highway 183 and 290. We understand that one firefighter has been hurt. We're live on the scene and we'll have updates throughout the newscast. Also coming your way, empty school you paid for it. The lights are on, but no students are using it. We find out why. And oh, say can you see? Answering her critics, what Beyonce finally had to say about her national anthem controversy. Well, a couple nights of cool temperatures, but a warm up is coming. We'll talk about your weekend forecast after the break. That was a real 